This is a two-part video. In the first part of the video, we're going to be editing an imported drawing. In the second part of the video, we're going to be adding red line information to an imported drawing. From the file drop-down menu, select import. Here you can select the file that you want to import. If you use the files of type, you can see all the different formats that you create can import. Before we get started on making changes, sometimes when you open up a drawing, some dimensions will be broken. In this case, you can notice that some are red, meaning that the dimension is not associated with the actual drawing itself. What that means is if I change this drawing, as I'm doing right now, you notice that the dimension on the right hand side, the 5, will update, but the red dimension, the 15 on the left, will not. So let's undo that and let me show you how to fix that. From the ribbon menu at the top, select the Detail tab. Then select Reassociate, Automatic Reassociate Dimension. Dialog window, select OK. Select the two lines that you want to associate the dimension with, and then the dimension, and hit OK. Now let me modify the area again and see what happens with the dimensions. You'll notice that the dimension that was red is now black also. So now not only does the 5 dimension update, but the also the 15 dimension updates to 30. Now let's do the same thing to the 115 dimension at the top. Select Reassociate, Automatic Associate Dimension, select OK in the dialog window, then select the entities you want the dimension attached to, and then the dimension itself, and select OK. You'll notice that the dimension again turns black from red. Now let's extend the part on the left hand side by 20 millimeters. The right mouse button select Stretch, window in the area that you want to modify, and then drag the dyno handle. Type in negative 20, extend it by 20 millimeters. Now let's window into another area on the model. In this case, you'll notice that the dimension looks kind of odd compared to the other ones. If you mouse over, you'll notice that it's individual pieces. This again is a broken dimension, it's not associated with the drawing. First thing, let's select it, right mouse button and remove it. Let's select the circle, right mouse button, select dimension and enter a dimension. Let's mouse over to another area where there's some broken dimension. Again, highlight the dimensions, right mouse button, and then delete them. In this case, let's add a different type of dimension. From the Detail tab, under the Diameter of Dimensions, select Edge Vertical, select the surface, and place the dimension. Let's mouse over to another area that has a similar problem. Again, remove the dimensions. In this case, instead of using Edge Vertical, we're going to use Edge Horizontal. Select the Edge Horizontal, select the Circles, and then place your dimensions. Now let's modify some circle geometry. Double click on the circle, a dialog window will open. You'll see in there that there's radius information. Change the radius value, and then hit OK. You'll see that not only the circle updates, but also the dimension attached to that circle will and actually update. Now let's modify the ISO view in the drawing. Select the entities that were moved in the other views by 20 millimeters. When you finish selecting, with the right mouse button, select the Move Scale option. And then place the Dyna handle. Once the Dyna handle appears, you'll notice that it only lets you move the X and Y. By selecting the X vector, I can use the Align and Align to Vector. Then simply select an entity on the screen, in this case a line. Then you'll notice that the dyna handle on that can rotates to match that same vector and it allows you to move in that direction. Select the X dyna handle and then input negative 20 and then OK. Now using the trim first function, let's continue cleaning up that view. The trim first function can either be accessed via the home tab at the top or using the right mouse button on the curve. Simply select the line you want to trim and the line you want to trim to. Now let's modify the circle we added before. In the ISO view, the circle is now an ellipse. You can change the minor and the major axis. But instead of just typing a value in, you can also use additions or subtractions or divisions. Simply type the value in that you want to add. Hit OK. You're going to have to hit OK twice. The first time it's going to come back and tell you 
make sure it's correct. The second time we'll confirm the function and create the modification. Now let's add a revision to the revision block. First, we're going to expand the revision block. Select the two horizontal lines with the mouse button. Then select the Move Scale button. Select the position where you want the guy in the handle. At the top of the conversation bar, select Copy. And then drag, and you can snap to the end of that line on the screen, and then hit OK. It makes a copy of the two lines. Now let's extend the vertical lines in the revision block. In the ribbon menu at the top, select Trim, and then Mold. Select the line you want to trim to, and then select the vertical lines you want to trim to that line. Now let's add revision information to the revision. Right mouse button, select Detail, then Note. In the dialog window that appears, type in the text information you want, then hit OK, and place the text. After that, hit the right mouse button, say Back, and then put more information until you're finished with the revision in the revision block. Now let's change the revision number in the title block. At the very bottom right, select the 1. The right mouse button, select Format. In the dialog window at the top, select Text. And then change the 1 to a 2 and hit OK. Now let's save the savings as a DWG file. In the file drop down menu, select Export. Add OK. Window in the drawing. Select OK, the right mouse button, and then enter the name of the DWG drawing. Part 2 of the video, we are going to open another drawing, and this time we're going to add red line information. In the file drop down menu, select Open, and select the drawing that you want to open. Let's change the creation color to red. Using the drop-down color menu, you can see that there is no red color available, but you can change it in the level. Let's change the level name to red line. Then you can change the color to red. You can also change the line width. Now let's change the creation color for any text that we add. Using the Style Editor button at the top, let's change the color for the dimensions, and we can also change the font. Then we can change the color and font for the annotations. Now let's add some information to add an ISO view. Using the right mouse button, let's select Curve, Circle, Center, Diameter. Let's change the diameter in the conversation bar at the top to 70 and place our circle. Now let's add a label on that circle. With the right mouse button, select Detail, then Label. Enter the information that you'd like the label to have. Pick the circle and then place your label. Now we'll zoom into another area of the drawing. In this case, we're going to change the bend radius. Again, select the right mouse button, Detail, then Label. In the dialog window that opens, enter the information that you'd like to appear in the label. And 
then place the lid. Now without getting out of the pumps, let's mouse over to another area. In this case, we're going to just select with the right mouse button back. With that light window will reopen. You can enter the new information here. And then in this case, we're going to add a note to remove four holes. Place the arrowheads, and then just place where you want the note. You'll notice that if you don't get out of the function, you can keep placing arrowheads across the holes. Let's pass over to another area in the drawing. In this case, we're going to add a note. So with the right mouse button, select detail, then note. Just enter X. I'm going to put an X over the R8. Hit the back button. Now we're going to add more information when the dialog went over. Once you have the information entered, just hit OK and then place the note. Now let's save the changes as a PDF. In the File drop down menu, select File, Export, PDF, Window in the entire drawing, and select OK. Enter a file name once the dialog window opens. This is what the PDF will look like once it's saved.